Good morning. Yes, we were talking yesterday about the Magi up in Iraq, up in Babylon, studying all their records and probably finding from the records that in fact it had been reported by Daniel in the past that this sign would appear, a sign which had been foretold before by another strange uh, prophet from the area, a man called Balaam. He had said, I see a star coming out of Israel. So they would have talked about it as a light in the heavens or a star. And they would have taken time planning and eventually they would have travelled. They would have travelled from their home and travelled down to Israel. And of course, where would they go when they arrived in Israel? Well, of course, they would go to Jerusalem. Because if somebody had been born king, probably that is where the child is going to be. Now, one thing we have to realise about these Magi is that they were not just uh, priests. They were warriors as well. And as a result, no one really troubled a Magi caravan. If you notice in the stories and the scriptures, there's no sign of the Romans coming out to challenge them and say, what are you doing here? Because they would know quite simply if they interfered with a Magi caravan, then there could probably be trouble on hand. And these were really fighting men who could hold their own in any situation. And when they come to Herod, they say to him, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? And Herod suddenly panics. See, Herod had a very strange attitude. He was very sort of jealous of his position. It was said of Herod, it was safer to be his pig than to be his son. Because quite simply, he wouldn't kill his pig to eat because he was orthodox in that sense. But he was always worried that somebody was going to take the throne away from him. And here were these magi coming saying, we've seen signs in the heavens that say somebody has been born king of the Jews. So he sends, Herod is, he sends for the other elders in Israel. And he says, when this Messiah is going to be born, where is he going to be born? And they said, well, according to Micah, he can be born in Bethlehem. We don't know where this happened. These people who have come from Iraq, from Babylon, they say it's happened, but we've heard no reports about it. So Herod says to them, go and search out the child and see if you can find him. Because if he has been born king of the Jews, I want to come and honour him as well. One of the biggest lies that ever been told, because, of course, what he would want to do, quite simply, is get rid of this child. Because this wasn't a child who would one day be king. This is a child who had been born king. He had been born king. So he says to them, you go and search for the child and come and tell me. Oh, by the way, when did you first see this sign? And they said, oh, it's about two years ago now. We took some time preparing and traveling. But it was about two years ago. We had plenty of time because, you know, this child is going to grow up. It's not going to, he's not going to go away. Um, so we just took our time and we arrived and two years had passed. And two years had passed. The Magi travelled down to this little town of Bethlehem, wondering, you know, after two years, you know, lots of children have probably been born, how are we going to find this child? And then something strange happens. Because what they had seen back there in Babylon, they now see again. The light, or the star, it says, hovered over the house where Jesus was living. Now, stars don't hover over houses. That's where I think what they actually saw in the heavens was a light. It was the Shekinah glory of God. And now this particular Shekinah glory was resting upon this particular house where Mary and Joseph and Jesus were living. And they come to him and they acknowledge him and they present before him the gifts that they've been given, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Now again, you see, in many of our ceremonials, in many of our paintings, we see them bringing small little gifts. These Magi were important people in Iraq, and they were coming to honour a king. They didn't bring small gifts. They brought a substantial gift of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And we're going to have to realise this as we look at the life of Jesus as it develops from this point. Now they are sleeping after they present the gifts and suddenly once again gives, God gives them a message. He says, don't go back to Herod. Don't go back to Herod. If he comes, he's not going to come with blessings on this child. He's going to search out this child to try and kill him. So go back to Babylon by another route. And they depart. When they've gone, Joseph suddenly gets a dream as well. He'd had one before 
where the angel had told him that Mary was going to bear this child, Jesus. Now he has another dream, and he's told, quick, take Mary, take the child. You have to get out of Bethlehem. You have to leave. I expect, you know, Joseph and Mary had begin, began to think, we're going to spend our whole lives here. We're going to be working here. We're going to be living here. We've made friends here. But now suddenly everything changes. God says, quick, get out of this place. Again, we have this picture of Joseph and Mary and a donkey traveling down to Egypt to get out to the area. But of course, they had a bit of money now. They had gold, they had frankincense and myrrh, which was given to them in order that they could care for this child. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if before they left, they'd have gone over to Ankiarim and said to Zechariah and Elizabeth, quick, Herod's going to start searching for a child. And John, you know, everybody would have known about John being the vision that Zechariah had had and the birth of John the Baptist to Elizabeth in her old age. Perhaps he'll think that John is the Messiah and he may kill him as well. So I wouldn't be a bit surprised if the group that travelled down into Egypt was not just Joseph, Mary and Jesus, but probably John and his companions as well. Amen. <laughs>